shadows of this quiet town I see you there, your feathers on the ground Your eyes are heavy with the weight of the world What's in a life you never could offer Even if you can take a chance and try once more Don't let your worries weigh you down, down, down you The people you currently see are all now friends of mine, but that hasn't always been the case. In fact, we recently just met. Although you're earthbound Blessed with this gorgeous view. Yeah. Just boarded the 15 hour flight. I started my journey to Seoul, South Korea, and then another five hour flight to Bangkok, Thailand. I just woke up and I am in it right now. There's people everywhere. She works like I'm crazy. I, am, uh, wandering. I started my 30 day journey in the amazing city of Bangkok. As I was wandering to explore the many temples the city had to offer, I met two strangers from Spain who let me join them for the morning. There was a bit of a language gap, but we made it work. We explored multiple temples which were spectacular and wandered the city together for the entire morning. We even ate lunch together. This experience truly showed me how amazing this trip was going to be and almost all of my nerves about meeting people quickly vanished. However, I quickly learned that on the road, the strangers you meet come and go. And after we ate lunch, it was time to say goodbye to my new friends. It was such a lovely first encounter and I had hopes of seeing them again, but that never ended up happening. But these weren't the only strangers I met in Bangkok. In fact, I was about to meet some of the most amazing people that would change my life forever. While in Bangkok, I met a group of solo travelers in my hostel that all had never met before. And not to spoil the story, but we all hit it off so well, we ended up traveling together for the next two weeks. Let me introduce you to my new friends. We got massages together, partied a lot together, and quickly all became very close friends. Over the next two weeks, we explored three different cities and towns in Thailand together. After all meeting in Bangkok, we headed north to Thailand's second largest city, Chiang Mai. Now before we get into Chiang Mai, I was originally planning on heading south for Thailand's full moon festival within the first two weeks of my trip. But these people were absolutely amazing. I loved spending time with them and I wasn't sure when I'd ever get the chance to spend time with them again. So I decided to head north with them and I am so happy I did. In Chiang Mai, we all stayed at a party hostel and well, it's in the name. We did a fair amount of party. But outside of that, I entrusted my life to my new friend Lola, and we went on a lovely excursion to the sticky waterfall that was just outside of the city. This was one of the first of many waterfalls I'd see in Thailand, but it was definitely one of the most fun as you could climb up and down it. This excursion was the only one I really did in Chiang Mai, as we were only there for a couple of days. But before we left Chiang Mai to our next destination, we picked up a couple new friends. Now, our group of friends wanted to spend another day in Chiang Mai, but Lola and I felt like we had exhausted all of the things we wanted to do in the city, so we decided to escape to the countryside a day earlier than the rest of the group and hopped on a bus to the lovely town of Pai. I had never heard of this town prior to coming to Thailand, but every solo traveler that I met that had been there said it was a must stop. I'm so glad we went because this was by far my favorite spot in Thailand. Pai welcomed us with a lovely walking street with loads of food and shops, amazing bungalows that were next to beautiful rice fields, 
and many adventures in store for us. After Lola and I spent the day together, we rejoined our friends the following day and all went on some wonderful journeys through the outskirts of Pai over the following week. We all hopped on motorbikes and explored the Kokuso Bamboo Bridge, which offered some amazing views. But since I was still riding on the back of Lola's scooter, we ran into some troubles, which I'll get into in a bit. We then rode to the Mopang Waterfall, which is known for being able to slide down the waterfall into the plunge pool below. After having a ton of fun at the falls, maybe a bit too much fun, we went to the large white Buddha and were met with the most amazing view. I find it so incredible that after knowing these strangers for only a few days, how truly close I felt with them and how comfortable I was traveling around a whole new country together. But our adventures didn't stop there as we made our way on a multi-hour motorbike ride to the Lod Caves. On the way to these caves, this is when Lola and I ran into a bit of an issue. Since I was still riding on the back of Lola's bike, sometimes the bike struggled to get up steep hills. And this is one case where it almost was really bad. We were going up a hill and the bike started to roll backwards. So much so that it started to tip and we were holding on for dear life to make sure that we didn't fall into the ditch next to us. But luckily at the last second, a Thai local drove by, quickly hopped out and helped us push the bike up the hill. And even with this not so great experience, we made it to the caves. But when we got there, two of the three caves were shut down and the bamboo rafts were closed due to the amount of rain that they had gotten over the past few weeks. So it was a bit of a letdown. But even with it being a bit of a letdown, the views around the ride were incredible. As the week was coming to a close, our last big adventure as a group was the Pai Canyon, which I only have pictures of, but it ended up being a lot more hands-on than I expected. We of course had to end off our time together with how it all began, and we all went out and did karaoke. It was such a lovely and wholesome way to end our two weeks together. Now there's a lot more of this journey to go and plenty of new people to meet, but I need to pause for a second and say how thankful I am to have met these people. They made my first two weeks in Thailand absolutely amazing. And each one of them changed my life for the better. From the amazing journeys to the late night chats, I gained many valuable insights and life experiences that I'll cherish forever. However, there was one person that didn't want to leave Pai yet either, and you might be able to guess who that is. So Lola and I got another bungalow and ended up staying in Pai for another four days. Lola had quickly become one of my closest friends. Not just on this trip, but I'd venture to say she knew more about me than any of my friends back home. Maybe it was because we were still practically strangers, but there was something about it that made it easy to open up to each other. But one of the best things that Lola parted on me was how to ride a motorbike. I no longer had to ride on the back of hers, and now I'd be able to ride around the south when I went down there. With that, we ended up spending the next four days exploring the rest of Pai. We made our way to a lovely Chinese village, which had some amazing architecture and views. We went on a hike to a nearby waterfall, However, the river was so flooded that we didn't even make it halfway within the first few hours of hiking, so we decided to turn back around since the sun was going down. And we checked out a coffee shop that had an amazing overlook of the town we had fallen in love with. We also had each other eat foods we had never tried before. She had me try banh mi, which is a sandwich she loved from Vietnam, and I had her try a quesadilla, which I was shocked she had never had before. As our time together drew to a close, I truly hold Pai in a special place of my heart and cannot wait to go back. Along with that, my friendship that I formed with Lola means the world to me. I have never felt closer to someone, let alone someone I had only known for two weeks. Whatever the future holds, I know I can always ask for your advice, and the same goes for you. Thank you for providing me with new perspectives on people and the world, and also teaching me some amazing English slang. I'll cherish our time in Thailand together forever. It was sad our journey in Thailand had to come to an end, however, I'm sure I'll be seeing you soon. After parting ways with my new friend, I went on the longest bus ride of my life, and potentially my biggest mistake of the entire trip. As solo traveling goes, you're always looking for ways to save money. And to save money to get to the south, I took a bus from the north of Thailand all the way to the south of Thailand. This ride included three bus rides with two stops to change buses to a total to over 31 hours of traveling straight. I was sick, going stir crazy, and ready to never ride a bus again, but at least I saved $100.
But before we go on any further, how could I not talk about the food? The food in Thailand was absolutely incredible. And I never spent more than one to three dollars on any meal. While in Thailand, I got really into smoothies and started to really enjoy mango as well, which is something I never liked in the US. And smoothies were really only a dollar to two dollars. In the US, I usually stick to Pad Thai, but I really branched out and tried literally everything while I was in Thailand. My favorite dish though has to be Thai basil, and if you've never tried it, I highly suggest you test it out. Now let's head down to the Now, I had just spent my first two weeks of solo travel surrounded by amazing people and never really had alone time. So for the start of my journey through the south of Thailand, I decided to book a stay at a low-key hostel and spend some time reflecting by myself. I arrived in Kata, which is a beach town in Phuket, and enjoyed a couple of days relaxing on the beach and even took a surfing lesson. I also did my first ever solo hike, which led to a massive white Buddha overlooking all of Phuket. But after enjoying a few days alone, I was wanting to meet more solo travelers, so I moved on to PP Island where I did just that. After taking a boat ride to PP Island, I immediately made new friends at the hostel I was staying at. We went and explored a viewpoint hike, went out for dinner, and a bit of partying together too. Throughout this trip, it continuously blew my mind just how easy it was to hang out with people I had just met and just how much you can learn about each other in such a short amount of time. Due to the rain flooding the streets and the vibe of the island, I decided to cut my time short on PP after only two days. So I hopped on another ferry and made my way to Rayleigh Beach, which was actually a suggestion from my friend Lola. Now actually when I arrived in Rayleigh, I ran into a friend from PP, Aisha, who crazily enough had met Lola a few months prior, which is just wild and blew my mind. The amount of times I would leave somewhere and run into someone again was just incredible. We explored the area together, <laughs> risked our lives on a viewpoint hike, which was more like a climb. <laughs> this is one of the most beautiful things I've seen. Went on an island hopping boat tour and saw some Muay Thai. But just as all the other places and people I've met on this trip, I had to say goodbye and move on. I then took a very long journey to Suratani and I will be taking a night sleeper ferry to Koh Tao tonight. It's gonna be about an eight hour ride and I get into Koh Tao at 6 a.m. So it's gonna be an adventure. I've never done anything like this before. The night ferry was actually a wonderful experience where I met a number of very nice solo travelers who were all staying at the same hostel as me. Also, it was very nice sleeping to the rocking of the boat and waking up to a beautiful sunrise. I then, to save money, went on a nice 30 minute walk to my hostel. Koh Tao ended up being one of my favorite spots in the south of Thailand. It was full of wonderful views, beaches, and wonderful people. I actually did end up spending a fair amount of time alone in Koh Tao, but I had a few people that I hung out with too. Loris from Switzerland and Venice from Germany were two people I got very close with and I had a fun few days with. Unfortunately, my trip was quickly coming to an end, so I had to end my time on Koh Tao a bit earlier than I had hoped. But I hopped on another ferry to my last destination, Koh Phangan. Now before I left for my trip to Thailand, I made a post on LinkedIn about my trip. And I got a message saying that one of my former co-worker's sons lived in Thailand and would love to meet up with me. So after receiving his number and exchanging a few messages back and forth, I wasn't exactly sure if we were going to have the time to meet up or not. But he just so happened to live on Copenhagen, which is where I was headed. So with timing working out and the stars aligning, we ended up getting the chance to meet. I was very lucky to have Aaron around. He was able to show me all the cool local spots, tell me which roads to bike down for the best views and rides, and also was just lovely to hang around. I also met a few wonderful people at my hostel, and we went on an incredible hour and a half hike together to a secluded beach, and then another 30 minute hike to my favorite viewpoint of the entire trip. But after a lovely few days on Copenhagen, it was time to head back to the US. This trip lit a fire in my soul. Everything that I've preached throughout my life and on this channel has been that there are more good than bad people in the world. And this trip embodied just that. At every turn, I met the most wonderful people, all with unique perspectives on life and the world. Whether I spent one day with them or one week with them, 
They all impacted me and shaped me into who I am now. So much so, I'm planning to continue my travels at the end of this year. While in Koh Tao, I got a tattoo. Now, it may look like just some simple waves, but to me, it means much more than that. One of my favorite quotes is, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. And this is something I try to live my life by, and I've never experienced it more on a day-to-day -day than on this trip. In life, there will be trials and tribulations that will try to push you down or set you back, and it's up to you to give in or to keep pushing forward. Waves will keep on coming, and they're not necessarily a bad thing. It's what you choose to do with them. Will you get knocked around, or will you learn to surf? Also, before you go, if you don't want to wait for my next video about my next crazy adventure, make sure to go check out trebelli.co. This is my blog where I post daily updates of my trip, like truly almost the hour of what I did every day. And I'm also posting travel tips from the things I learn and other things I pick up from other travelers along the way. Along with that, I post awesome pictures with the strangers I meet, the food I eat, and the beautiful places I go. So if you don't want to wait for the next crazy video and want to stay up to date, make sure to go check that out. The link will be in the description below. I appreciate all of your support on this next chapter of my life, and I'll see you in the next video.